So welcome everyone and thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Kathy Lang and I work at ESF in the Open Academy as Online Education Program Coordinator. And I work specifically with our only uh, fully online undergraduate degree in sustainability management. So as co-sponsors of this event and this series, uh, Dr. Doug Johnson is here with us as uh, facilitator for our conversation with Teresa Evans, and he is our curriculum coordinator for the sustainability management degree. So before we get started, I wanted to just mention a few housekeeping items. Uh, we've muted participant mics as we will be recording um, or we are recording our event, but after the formal conversation section, we'll stop recording and welcome your questions uh, via unmuting or the chat. So just wanted to let you know that. And as mentioned before, if you wanted to set your view to speaker um, during the presentation, it just lets you focus on our speakers. And um, just a plug before we get into today's conversation, we have a second in this series um, on October 20th, Michael Amadori, who is Sustainability Manager for Hobart and William Smith Colleges, will be joining us. So mark your calendars. I will send follow-up emails with information registration. Um, and then lastly, uh, past recordings of events in this series, this is actually our fifth, um, are available through the Office of Career Services website. And um, I would encourage you to check those out if of interest. We've had some great speakers and um, interesting dialogues. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our Director of Career Services and co-sponsor in the series, um, Dr. Or John Turbeville. Thanks. Thanks, Kathy. So my name is John Turbeville, and I serve at ESF as one of the uh, senior assistant deans in the Office of Student Affairs, as well as the Director of Career Services. Um, we in Career Services are delighted to be partnering again this year with Kathy and the Open Academy on a series of webinars hosting professionals in sustainability. Today, I'm excited to introduce Teresa Evans. Uh, Teresa is a 2009 graduate from our Environmental Studies Department. She works currently for Gershman, Brickner, and Bratton as a senior consultant focused on solid waste management, waste reduction, and recycling. Um, before turning things over to Teresa, I wanted to thank her for her previous partnership with our office and helping us to co-create an opportunity for an ESF student to work locally with Okra, where she worked previously, and Nottingham High School to explore strategies for waste management in the Syracuse City School District. And so without further ado, um, thank you to Teresa for being with us and I'll turn things over to you. Okay, great. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Thank you so much for taking some time to listen in today and also for um, sort of accepting my more casual style. I didn't prepare PowerPoint slides because I really like having conversations. So I'm hoping that you guys will ask questions too and we can just have sort of a nice dialogue back and forth. Um, so I can start by talking about my current job and the industry a little bit in general, and then we can just go from there um, with some questions and stuff. So. I currently work as a consultant for a, um, a firm that is based in Washington, DC that specializes in sustainability consulting, but we specialize specifically in advising on solid waste issues throughout the country. So as you all know, sustainability is so interdisciplinary. There's a lot of different aspects and directions that you can go, which is a great thing in the field. But I found that um, through my career after I left ESF, it's a little bit easier to kind of find a niche, if you can, within sustainability um, so that you can become more of a subject matter expert. So whether you're working in the public sector or the private sector on a small local scale or larger national projects, it's really helpful if you can become an expert in one subject within this interdisciplinary field, at least in my experience. 
So the solid waste industry in particularly is really growing. There's a large need for a lot of talented, smart people like all of you to join us and help us work in garbage. I mean, is there anything more exciting or glamorous than throwing stuff away? I don't think so. Renewable energy is cool, but you guys, trash, garbage, that's where it's at. <laughs> um, there is a lot of you know materials management need happening everywhere um and particularly as we've seen with the pandemic and covid and all of those impacts our sanitation workers the field of, of garbage recycling is essential it's critical and it's really growing a lot um and i like that there's so much variety within it as well even though it's a specialized subject there are over 80,000 governing bodies in the United States alone, and all of them are affected by solid waste management planning and solid waste generation and disposal. No matter who you are, where you are, we all touch these materials and we all have to figure out what to do with them when we're not using them anymore. So there's all of these opportunities across the country to dive in and help solve problems, help local municipalities figure out the most efficient and long lasting sustainable ways to deal with their materials. Across the country, landfills are nearing capacity. So it's more important than ever to refresh the idea of um, waste reduction and reuse and then recycling sort of after that. Um, I feel like ESF is very uniquely positioned to train students in this industry and sort of help close the gap between um, the public sector and the clients out who need the help um, because it's just already an interdisciplinary yet focused sustainability institution. So I definitely encourage you to think about um, this path for a career moving forward because there's so much to it and we need so much assistance. And um, the types of jobs that you can have, it, there's a large range, but it's anything from local government to a special solid waste planning district to um, trade associations, national industry trade associations, the disposal facilities themselves, the places where all the materials end up, they need a lot of talented people working for them, what they can do with the items after they receive them universities, large campuses, large institutions in general that generate a lot of waste. There's opportunity there to work and help. And also even technology um, companies and for engineering firms with planning divisions. These are all the different types of employers um, in the materials management solid waste fields in, in um, New York and North America. Um, so I feel like I just kind of rambled a lot. Are there any initial questions? <laughs> sure. Thanks, Teresa. Um, it might be helpful to to talk a little bit about what you yourself do. You know what you do in your in your role. So mm -hmm. prior to your current position, you know you worked for eight years with the Onondaga County Resource Recovery Agency, which we most of us know as OCRA. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about what you what you actually did? <laughs> sure. Yeah, day to day basis. Sure. So while I was at Okra, um, my job title there was recycling specialist, which I always thought that was a pretty cool title to say I'm a recycling specialist. I like that. And and what I focused on there was a lot of education and outreach in the community. So going out to the places in the county that generate a lot of waste whether that be the hospitals, businesses. I did a lot of schools, um, like all the primary schools, and making sure that they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. As recycling is the law in New York State and in Onondaga County, there was a little bit of enforcement, some aspects of enforcement to that, which is very interesting. Making sure that there's recycling compliance and helping to overcome challenges if there wasn't, or if the recycling was not happening very well, or you know they weren't putting the right things, why, why was that happening? And what could we do, whether it was infrastructure or education of staff or students um, to correct that, to help so that there, there would be more recycling, quality recycling. 
And um, so I, I did a lot of public outreach. And I would say that so far, um, every job I've had, writing skills are really important and public speaking skills are important. Not that you have to always get up and do a presentation, but to be able to engage with the public is in this field and sustainability in general, I think increasingly vital to be able to hone your public engagement skills. Great, thanks. So, so you are a graduate of VSF in the Environmental Studies program. Mm -hmm. um, so, so was this was this your first job out of graduation, and, and is it what you were looking for? <laughs> sure. So, while, so while I was a student at ESF, I really couldn't decide what I wanted to major in because I thought everything was so interesting. <laughs> and right, there's just so much to it. So I stayed um, undecided and declared for a while until it got to the point where you really have to pick a major. And I ended up choosing environmental studies at the time because I did find the policy aspects interesting, legislation, but also because it was still a pretty interdisciplinary degree program. So I could feel like basically still being undecided, <laughs> um, but able to take lots of classes under that umbrella of environmental studies, a little bit of everything. And while I was a student there, I got to know OCRA and like learn of who OCRA was. And I always thought that organization was really cool, was interesting, that working in recycling professionally would be interesting. So I knew I wanted to work for an organization like OCRA, but I didn't necessarily feel like I had to stay in Syracuse. It just sort of worked out that way. So if you are interested in pursuing working for local governments or agencies like that, similar, a solid waste planning authority, at least in New York State, the best way to get in with them is through civil service. Taking civil service exams, it, it might sound a little daunting, but it's actually pretty easy, but it's a very slow moving process. So I always recommend taking the exams, even if you're not currently job searching, just to get your name on the list, because it takes many months before they process and even release scores. And then after that, it's a long time before employers go through the list and start calling people who took the exam to see if they want to interview. So it's a good like plan B option to just sort of always keep an eye on which exams are being offered in the different um, community where you live and take the exam if you're qualified and just try to get in just to get your foot in the door. And even if you are working for a company that's not necessarily calling themselves an environmental or green or sustainable company, with the degree and the classes you're taking now, you're always going to have those tools. So you can bring that to any job, even if it's not necessarily a sustainability green job, you can take the tools and skills you have with the knowledge that you're getting at ESS and make that company green. And it's an asset to you that you can bring those skills that you can say, I can help you reduce your trash. I can help you save money. I can help you do these things that will make you a more green company, which will then attract business and clients and some clout in the community. So um, I guess I'm trying to say, expand what you're looking for too. Don't feel limited by only trying to find a quote like green job because you can make any job green once you have the knowledge, which you're getting now. And so um, open yourself up, take those exams with civil service tests and get on the list. And I ended up doing that for Okra. I took an exam and I didn't hear for a while. It was like two years later that they had an opening, but thankfully I was able to get in that way. And those eight years went by really fast. And so I'm like shocking to hear that's how long I was there because the time went really quickly. So you went from a local government agency to a multinational private corporation. That's right. What's, yeah, I, what's similar and different between those two environments? It's very different. I, one of the projects I'm working on now is designing a landfill on the island of Tinian. So that is very different than working in Syracuse, New York. <laughs> um, the opportunity to work remotely has really opened up a lot of opportunity for all of us. And it's exciting that I can work for this company that's based in Washington, DC, but still live in Syracuse. I'm very grateful that I did both, that I worked in the public sector and I'm now just starting in the private sector because it really helps broaden perspective when you see are able to see things from each side. 
And it benefited me to start at Okra because I was able to become specialized. I, like I was sort of saying in the beginning of the presentation, in a small local setting, you start to really navigate all the ins and outs of all the administration, see, seeing how all of the decisions are made on this local scale. And you really learn like bottom up all of the details. And that's very valuable to then take to a broader, larger firm because many of the clients that we work with are municipalities. One of the main um, job duties I have now is to write solid waste management plans for cities around the country that are required to submit such things, um, such documents. So we help them, uh, we write a plan for their community about how to manage their solid waste. And I'm, I'm able to relate to what their needs are because I worked for a municipality first. So if you can come full circle and do something on the public side and the private side, I think it really helps your skills and abilities to be in either role or either capacity like moving forward. Great, thanks. Um, there's, you know, obviously a, a lot of attention being focused recently and currently on, on climate change. Mm -hmm. How do you see or where do you see climate change affecting uh, both operationally, but also maybe strategically, you know, waste recovery efforts. Operationally, how do you pick up the trash after a flood? <laughs> but strategically, you know, how is that gonna, how is climate change going to affect our, our management of, of our waste streams? Yeah, that's a great question and a big question. There's a lot of connection between climate change and solid waste. Um, one of the first things that comes to mind is the fleet of the vehicles used to collect solid waste around the country, and also the distance they have to travel to get to the disposal facilities. So there's a lot of talk right now about how can we convert the um, large garbage trucks to electric and make a more electric fleet. There's a little bit of progress happening in that in um, North America, but it's certainly not widespread yet, but that is the hope for the future. And also, how can we have less waste to dispose of in the first place, particularly getting material out of landfills? Luckily in New York and the Northeast, that's not as much of an issue, but around the country generally, landfills are reaching capacity and we're facing um, a lot of upcoming potential struggle with what are we gonna do when the landfills are, are full? And that does tie into climate as well. So particularly, there's a lot of efforts right now around developing technology to process food waste. We've got very strong composting programs here in New York and some really great legislation that's starting in 2022 that bans organic material from landfill and that is awesome, but many other states do not have that. And so we're really focusing on trying to move food out of the landfill because it takes up so much volume, takes up a lot of space, and it also has so much beneficial use. All that nutrition that's still sitting there shouldn't be in the landfill when it could productively benefit the rest of the community. Um, also something we talked about in the beginning about focusing more on reuse and waste reduction ties into climate too. Um, there are things happening with glass in this industry that we're trying to find more beneficial use for glass that's not putting in the blue bin. And there's a lot happening in New York for that too, but around the country, not so much. It's generally crushed up and used in roadways in most of the country right now, or sometimes as landfill cover, which is something, but glass has so much more potential. It's infinitely recyclable. So we're trying to work on some of that stuff too in the industry. Cool. That Sparked another thought, <laughs> of course. So many of the, it sounds like many of the efforts that are going on um, have to do with waste stream diversion. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, taking taking things out of the, the path to the landfill. What what efforts are going on in terms of, you know, the reduction in the actual generation of waste and in, in material reduction or others so that we don't even have to to do that. <laughs> do you see any trends or, or directions that or opportunities for students in that area? Definitely. I think there's a lot of emphasis on um, 
just how we approach waste management generally, and even the cultural impacts of changing solid waste management patterns. Um, there's focus on extended producer responsibility and the circular economy, which I first learned the term circular economy while I was at ESF, I was a student there. So it's exciting that I feel like ESF was on the forefront in talking about um, circular economy and closing that loop in ways that now um, other people are acting in the industry, acting like that's a brand new concept. And so it's, it's cool that um, ESF already has that going on in the curriculum. That's very important and we're finally paying attention to it. The um, emphasis on manufacturers becoming responsible for the items they create that we then dispose of. If they are tasked with disposing of these materials, then perhaps they will design them in a way that makes them easier to get rid of or easier to reuse. So there's a big push there. Um, the, another kind of tying into the previous question too is trying to factor in how the weather is changing and these large weather events and how that affects trash and landfills and um, being able to containerize litter and have less litter in general. Um, sort of just uh, thinking about how we can reduce the waste impact on the landscape specifically as, and especially as the weather changes because of climate change. Super. Um, in addition to your careers, your jobs, you've also had a lot of activity in various professional and advocacy organizations. Um, what what do those organizations do, and and why are you involved? <laughs> sure. So I speak very highly of two industry um, trade organizations in particular. One is New York based. It's called NISAR. New York State Association of Reduction, Reuse, Recycling. The other is SWANA, the Solid Waste Association of North America. I highly recommend um, while you are a student joining trade industry associations that are of interest to you, they exist for every field. Every major has its own uh, professional associations. They're extremely valuable. And while you're a student, they're usually cheaper to join. You can get a discount on membership. And that's why I say like, do it right now, sign up today with your student ID. Um, they are great because they are a way for professionals in the industry to connect and talk to each other um, every day about what's going on and helping each other solve challenges that are similar. Um, it's a great way to get mentorship from people who've worked in the industry for many years. They often offer a mentorship program with young professionals. There's conferences that you can attend also at a discount if you're a student or member, which is really great for networking. And, you know, building those professional relationships sounds very like old school and kind of boring, but it's still so important to network, to put yourself out there and build these relationships with people um, and companies. And that's how I was able to get the job I have now. I first met people through, at my current company through a conference that was being um, held by SWANA. So that's the Solid Waste Association of North America. You can just get your questions answered, career paths. They often have job boards and job postings. So, um, you know, reach out and, and see if there's some organizations that spark your interest more related to what you think you might want to do. And if, if none come to mind, then I say join SWANA and join NISAR, the New York State focused one and also the national. Great, thanks. So, You've, you've been out for a while, <laughs> had a successful career. We won't count the years. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if you were if you had the opportunity to go back to school or to, um, you know, develop a new skill um, that would help you in your in your work, what, what, what do you think that would be? Yeah, so I would love to go back to school. I would love to go back to ESF and just do it again and again. I often say that if I won the lottery, I would be a college student forever. Like that's what I would choose to do. Um, in terms of skills that I think would be useful in curriculum to try to study now, um, something that I, I didn't totally know that surprised me was the need for people to have knowledge of safety aspects. So a little bit of like, the OSHA training, but just environmental hazard safety trainings, that is extremely important and needed a lot. And so that would make you a very valuable candidate. 
And um, you'll likely have to go through those trainings anyway, once you become an employee, but if you could look into some of that now, um, the public engagement, writing, speaking, as much as you're able to learn and study that, um, taking civil service exams, um, I'm trying to think of what other classes particularly, um, de definitely the, the health and safety training would make, would make a difference and writing. Great, thank you. Yeah, the um, we do have a public engagement class in the sustainability management program. Plug for that. Take it. <laughs> All of you take it. <laughs> and uh, yes, but thanks, thanks for the thought on the hazard training aspect. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Um, let's see. I mean, I think we can probably, you know, take answer, take questions from others as well. Um, the only maybe transitional question I might have for you is, is what's in the future for for waste management other than more trash? <laughs> <laughs> well, right. So waste is it's inevitable. It's something, you know, as long as there are people, there will always be materials to get rid of, probably. Definitely moving forward, there's a lot of emphasis on zero waste as much as possible. Um, sometimes I think that term is used a little bit misleading to the public, but um, the idea is very aspirational goal that a lot of institutions and companies are working towards, which is a good thing. So certainly moving towards zero waste, really um, emphasizing that extended producer responsibility and product stewardship, su such that manufacturers become more responsible for handling the items that they make, instead of asking a small municipality that in no way has the resources that Coca-Cola company does to deal with paying for the disposal and figuring out how to dispose of the item. Um, the circular economy, those are the trends. Great, great, that's excellent. Yeah, so in terms of, of asking questions from, from everyone else, um, you can either put a question in the chat area um, or, or raise your hand. 